The second game of our second semi-final here. Another best of three. Snoot is currently down one game. He lost on Star Station against Sage. And here we have him on screen in blue, facing his Protoss opponent, this time on Belchia Vestige, starting to the top left. We have the Root Gaming player. This is, of course, Sage, and let's find out what he's going to do in game number two. Game number one, he started with a Gateway Expand. A very good build and very popular since Naniva introduced it to the European scene and has defeated so many players there. After that, Naniva not really successful in the WCS Europe. He actually lost a lot of his games. He also lost the last set of matches that he played against Tafel. Was not too happy about that either. But in a, a Dreamhack, he just played an amazing tournament. Was defeated by Linok in the finals. Defeated a lot of Zergs on the way to face Linok. And Sage is getting the pile in the main base once again. What Snoo tried to do was go for a massive amount of links and bane links in map number one to counter his opponent's build. But it didn't really work out too well for him. So right now we are in a position where it's going to be interesting to observe if Snoot is just trying to change his style a little bit and if so then how. We have him once again uh, starting with uh, yeah, starting with a spawning pool here instead of going into the hatch first. Hatch first is very risky if you are facing a forge opening, but if you are up against an opponent that starts with the gate where you can always add the hatch first, there is no problem whatsoever. So it's gonna be uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what he does when he realizes that he's once again up against the gateway opening. This is just the risk you take when you don't go for a drone scout. With an early drone scout you have the option of going into a hatch first instead of the pool but you are of course losing a little bit of mining time here and also dedicating one of your drones to find out what's going on. But right now as you can see we have still the safer option with the hatch after the spawning pool. The overlord moving in at this point already seeing well there is no forward pylon, there is no expansion just yet so he will realize that it is most likely once again a gateway opening by his opponent. And this worked so well for Sage in game 2. Uh, Snoot's third base was not done, but the, he had to cancel it. He had to cancel it while he was building it because we had just uh, Sage moving in with too many units. There was no way for him to defend this. He tried, not for lack of trying, but well, let's find out what Snoot is up to in game number 2. Once again the gas. You always want to get gas when you see that your opponent is going into the gateway attack. Or at least the gateway opening. Reason being that if there is an aggression or a, a, aggressive attack with... Can there be a not aggressive attack? I don't think so. So if there's an attack you want to have speed links because uh, the, more z uh, the more stalker heavy your opponent plays the better when you have a lot of zero links that have the ability to surround them and take them out. Without that it's going to be very difficult for you to hold this aggression. But right now we have the uh, Mothership Core out there. And the Mothership Core is a central element of uh, going f into a gateway expand because you need the Photon Overcharge to defend if your opponent goes for all-out aggression and tries to take down your natural expansion, which was the case in Rings of Liberty. And we didn't have the Mothership Core back then, so uh, this is the, the Forge expand was just the result of players realizing that they can't hold a second base without having the cannons, without having the Forge and the Wall, but now in Heart of the Swarm with the Mothership Core, things are a little bit different. Stargate in the main base, completely unscouted. This is the tech choice for Sage in game number two. Snoot has the extra queens now at the bottom right and he's heading over at 5.30 to take his base once again. He sees at the front that there are not too many gateways, uh, well actually there are three gateways being built again this time, so if Sage commits to this he might actually be able to force another cancel here, but the problem really being that he does not know what's going on. He doesn't see the Stargate. He did not see the probe that is currently hovering over here and could put on the forward pylon and will. So I'm a bit afraid that he might lose this third base once again. He has not a lot on the map. There are eight Zerglings just now starting to scout the map. But let's see if they are able to find this pylon in time. He might actually not be able to, uh, to get that done. One round of warp and that's all that it takes to save the pylon. And he sees the links. The links are streaming in and he sees it. And the links don't see the pylon. So he can once again just warp in. Warp gates are getting ready. We have also a few phoenixes taking down overlords. And do we see the warp in? Links are everywhere. And actually, that's something that Snoot sees. This is a lot of links. 
This is a lot of Zerglings, and here, even a little bit prematurely using the Nexus, the Photon Overcharge, I actually don't think that that was a smart move. Sage is doing this way too early. He could have taken down those few Zerglings with units, no problem whatsoever, and waited a little bit longer. But Snoot is not going to punish him for him just yet. The pylon is there, and we have the first two Zealots being warped in. A few more will follow f very soon. But now we also have, with the, yeah, the Phoenix is still harassing, we have the first spawn crawlers being built. Here come the Zerglings, they see what's going on, but against the Zealots, they have no chance of pulling this off. But the more important part is that Snoot at least knows what's going on right now. So he can prepare, he can make sure that he gets the Roaches out. This time he did not skip the Roach Warren, and this is a much safer play that Snoot is currently executing. And also we have... Once again, a supply block for Sage. He was already supply blocked a second ago, then a pylon finished, but he is still supply blocked, and that's so annoying because he cannot continue this aggression. He has the Phoenixes taking down a couple of Queens, and the Zealots are working at the ex expansion. But now, with those Roaches moving in, there's not a lot that he can do. He can kill a couple of those Harvesters, and the Queens especially, or the Phoenixes are picking off a few of the Roaches. What's really annoying, on the other hand, for him is that with, uh, yeah, with four, he just barely is able to take out one of the roaches. Let's see, Harvest has killed four in total. Resources lost, much more for Snoot here. But still a position where the Zerg has the third base secured. The third is alive. He did not lose it this time. And having this third is really the most crucial part. Once again, with another pylon, another round of warp ins hits home. But once more, the supply block for Sage. Sage really struggling a little bit with his macro here. He's supply blocked the entire time. That's so annoying for them. This is like the third time that he's supply blocked and it could be worse. I mean, this is one of the situations where you want to apply pressure to the third base, you want to take it down. Then you are supply blocked over and over again and you can't do anything because your opponent has more units. Now Sage is once again about to be supply blocked. Dude, build more pylons. There it is. He's losing the pylon to the left side. It's something that he knew already would happen and he's supply blocked again. Horrible macro by him in this game. I mean, at least he added the double forge. He realized that his aggression would not work because he was supply blocked several times. So he added the double forge. He can go into the double upgrades right now. And we have him with an attempted third base. Also keep in mind that it's already 3 a.m. in Korea. So both players a little bit tired here as well. It's quite late. Another round of warp ins here. This time sentries to make sure that the force fields are going to be good. Trying to trap a few units. Rudy the Roach is trying to take down the wall on his own, but that is not happening with this many Phoenixes around. But for uh, Sage, this is a very different game compared to map number one. On map number one, he was in a very good spot and he took the game fairly early. He took a really good lead, but now he's falling behind. He's falling behind fast. We have a, a nice tech, a really fast tech into, Lea, uh, into Hive at the 11 minute mark already. And Snoot has a 20 supply lead. He has three bases. He's taking a fourth now. He's controlling huge parts of the map already with his creep. Could be better, but he's working at it. Doing a decent job in a PvC. Still struggling a little bit with those Phoenixes. That's something that he did not really get a hold on just yet. How many did he lose in total? Ten Harvesters. Could be worse, but still. And Sage. He is now moving into uh, Colossi. He's moving into Void Rays from one Stargate plus one plus one. He's still being Chrono Boosted. Here we have now the Phoenixes soon to be dealing with uh, Hydralisks. Hydra Den is on the production tab. And currently looking here at the Forges, we are going to see plus two plus two. Did we see the Twilight Council already? I don't think he built it. Let me double check. No, no Twilight Council, so he cannot go into uh, the added upgrades. He will have to stick it out with 1-1 one, one for now. Another oversight by him. Another huge oversight by Sage. He can't be too happy about this. This is not him trying to hit a timing on one. And again, supply blocked and heavily supply blocked. Now building the Twilight Council. And this aggression might take down the fourth, but I feel even if he takes down the fourth, that is all that he's going to do with it. Would still be an accomplishment. I mean, three base against three base. It's not being too bad. Yeah. Snoot is not even trying. Snoot is not even trying. He's building his Vipers and his Hydras now. But with the Blinding Cloud abduct 
and everything that he has, he should be able to uh, do a lot of damage to the Protoss army. The drone is already being here, probably gonna drop that hatch fairly soon once again. Army supply by now is in favor of Snoot. And now he has the Vipers out. He also has the range upgrade for his, um, for his Hydralisks. And we have the speed upgrade not done just yet as you can see, but plus two plus two not being researched for neither one of them. But there's a difference. Sage tr not trying to hit a 1-1 one -one timing, whereas Snoot is. And Snoot is also going into the plus 2 plus 2 behind this. So he's doing both. He's going out with Vipers with plus 1 plus 1, trying to do damage with a massive army. But he's also preparing for a composition behind this. Ah, oh, there is the Abduct. Double Abduct. One against the Void Ray, the other one against the Colossi. Sage is in trouble here. Another flank is moving in and bye-bye Void Rays. He doesn't have the critical Void Ray amount just yet and with the Prismatic Alignment the air unit can do a lot of damage against the Roaches but the Hydralists are just overwhelming. Sage has been taken out here quite easily in game number two. Snoot is forcing a third game in this best of three series.